Imagine a ship that combines the power of ancient warriors with the sneakiness of today's technology. Decades have passed since the formidable warships of World War II ruled the oceans. Now, the game has changed with a formidable F-126. The F-126 isn't just built, it's forged for the future, representing the highest height of German naval engineering since World War II. But what makes the F-126 so advanced, and what can you expect? Let's dive and find out why the F-126 is a floating fortress. But first, let's take a step back in history during World War II. What was Germany's most feared ship? The Bismarck. These ships consisted of two speedy battleships crafted for Germany's Kriegsmarine before World War II started. They were the largest and mightiest warships the Kriegsmarine had ever seen, weighing over 41,000 metric tons. After some upgrades, the turbines tipped the scales even more, becoming the heaviest ship ever constructed by the German Navy by an additional 2,000 tons. Each ship boasted four turrets, with eight massive 38-centimeter guns, and they could cut through the water at a top speed of 30 knots or 35 miles an hour. But the modern F-126 frigate is an even more formidable force. Why? The F-126 frigate, also known as the Saarland-class frigate, is the next wave of outstanding surface warships for the German Navy. These ships are set to replace the older F-123 Brandenburg-class frigates. They are the largest surface warships to join the German Navy since the colossal battleships of World War II. The launch of the first ship, Saarland, is eagerly anticipated in 2028, and it will be followed by the others named Niedersachsen, Bremen, and Thuringen. One advanced feature of the F-126 project is its focus on modularity and flexibility. This means that these ships can be quickly reconfigured to meet different operational needs. This innovative approach comes from the lessons learned by the Navy in the post-Cold War era when missions expanded beyond traditional combat. Now, the Navy has to be ready for a wide range of tasks, and the F-126 is designed to adapt to whatever comes its way. It truly deserves the nickname, Master of the Seas. If you're enjoying the video so far, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more awesome military content just like this. Your support fuels our mission of bringing our viewers the best content possible on the latest and greatest of military, technology, history, and innovation. So, how did the plan for this oceanic giant start? Back in 2009, the German Navy kicked off an ambitious project. Their goal? To create a versatile, modular ship that could handle the demands of long overseas deployments and adapt to various mission needs. Initially, this project was called MKS-180, short for Multi-Purpose Combat Ship 180, with the 180 hinting at the number of crew members planned for each ship. As the world changed and the Navy found itself operating more frequently far from home, with an older fleet designed for Cold War scenarios, the need for more adaptable ships became clear. These ships were designed to be suitable for different missions, meaning they could be quickly reconfigured to tackle various types of tasks as required. This need for flexibility influenced the MKS-180 project and other ship designs like the Baden-Württemberg-class frigates. By early 2011, it became evident that the MKS-180 was shaping up to be a genuine multi-role combat ship, ready to meet the modern challenges of a dynamic global landscape. During the analysis phase of the project, three potential designs for the new ship were proposed. One of these ships met all the Navy's requirements, while the other two, less expensive, only met some of the requirements and failed to meet the mark. Initially, the plan was to build more ships, but by 2015, the number was reduced to just four. The first of these ships was scheduled to join the fleet by 2023, with a total budget of around 4 billion euros for the project. There was also talk about possibly adding two more ships in a second batch later. Significantly, the scope of the MKS-180 project had expanded by this time. It was no longer just about adding the fleet, but about replacing the four older F-123 Brandenburg-class frigates. These frigates were crucial for the Navy's anti-submarine warfare ASW, capabilities, and the new ships were expected to take over this vital role bringing modern technology and improved flexibility to the Navy's operations. So, in 2015, the German Navy called for bids from European companies for the F-126 project, sparking interest from several top naval shipbuilders across Europe. 
Many big names threw their hats into the ring, including BAE Systems, who paired with German naval yards Damon Group, who teamed up with Blom Voss, and ThyssenKrupp Marine Systems, who joined forces with Lursen. Well, the competition was serious, but many things came up along the way. By mid-2017, BAE Systems, which had proposed a ship, then in March 2018, the German government decided not to proceed with the ThyssenKrupp Lursen Consortium. This led to some reshuffling. ThyssenKrupp Marine Systems worked as a subcontractor for German naval yards in Lursen, which had acquired Blom Voss in 2016, effectively teamed up with Damon. After a lengthy five-year bidding process, in January 2020, the Dutch Damon Group emerged as a winner of the tender, marking a critical step forward for the project. The deal with Damon includes designing and constructing four cutting-edge frigates, possibly adding two more, bringing the total contract value to a hefty 5.48 billion euros. Damon's blueprint for the F-126 frigates is loaded with the latest advancements in naval technology. They are designed to be exceptionally reliable and rugged with top-notch systems to avoid enemy detection. In December 2023, the first steel cutting ceremony occurred at the Peen shipyard in Wolgas, Germany. These frigates are being built entirely within Germany reflecting a strong commitment to strengthening national and European defense industries. Each frigate measures an impressive 166 meters long and can weigh up to 10,000 tons. Designed for global operations, these ships can handle all sorts of environments, from the heat of the tropics to the icy conditions of polar regions. They are designed with advanced automation and are made to be low maintenance, allowing them to be operated continuously by a core crew of 114 people. This design choice makes them efficient and ensures they can perform their duties effectively without a massive crew, making them a powerful addition to Germany's naval capabilities. But here's a question, what makes these ships stand out? Well, they can be equipped with special mission modules that include all the necessary gadgets, space, sensors, and weapons needed to complete specific tasks perfectly. These modules are like high-tech toolboxes. If they're not being used, they can be maintained and replaced separately from the ship. The primary role of these ships is to replace a Brandenburg class in anti-submarine warfare, ASW. This is possible because they have a unique modular sonar system known as ASW module. This ability to adapt quickly to different needs makes these frigates powerful and incredibly versatile, ready to handle whatever challenges they might face on the high seas. Like the ships from the Baden-Württemberg class, these fantastic vessels are designed to stay at sea for up to two years without returning to port for maintenance. Crews will switch out every four months, traveling to and from the ship on duty. This innovative approach means a vessel can be used much more efficiently, and they spend less time traveling between Germany and far-off conflict zones, like the waters off the Horn of Africa. During these missions, these frigates can patrol vast areas without a break. One particularly cool feature is a detention module, which allows a crew to hold suspects securely. If necessary, suspects can be even quarantined in a specially designed medical facility on board. The ships are also equipped for other critical tasks, such as enforcing embargoes, escorting merchant ships, or leading maritime task forces. Back in 2015, there were plans to include modules specifically for ocean mine countermeasures and a diving chamber, expanding their capabilities further. These ships are like floating command centers, but then, you might ask yourself, why does this ship matter to people outside Germany or Europe? It's because of what it can do and where it can go. Its capabilities make more countries nervous. They worry about the balance of power, that maybe one country has too much influence. While powerful military assets can provide security and protect national interests, they can also lead to anxieties about militarization and conflict escalation. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. Also, hit the like and subscribe buttons to get updated on more exciting content from us. As always, thanks for watching. We hope you enjoy taking a deeper dive into German naval advancement with us.